Hi everyone. I haven't sat in front of the camera for a while, even though I did just post a video that was filmed mostly at the beginning of September, so this feels a little odd. In case you've been following the saga, the main reason I've been gone is because of my multiple road trips that I was taking. That is all complete. Everything was safe and fine. No one in Nebraska wears masks though, which is not great. Um, and I'm here to talk about books that I bought because one of the exciting things I did while I was in Chicago was buy books. I hadn't actually been book shopping in a physical bookstore since December when I went to New York City, so uh, I felt like it was high time to do so. All the bookstores that I went to were very safe, there was a limited number of people that were allowed in the bookstore at any given time, masks were of course required, they had hand sanitizer right at the door so you could put it on as you um, entered and left, so I feel like it was a pretty safe Venture, and I got some exciting things, but I also haven't really talked about the books that I've been purchasing over the summer. Not that there are that many, but they're worth throwing in just because I only purchased seven books in Chicago, and that's a pretty decent haul for me in one trip. I figured I'd flesh it out a little bit with the other things that I've been buying this summer. So, this is essentially everything that I've bought since lockdown started, from what I can remember. The past six months have been like 60 years, so. I could have missed a couple things, but this is roughly what I've acquired. So I've sort of grouped them into big categories, nonfiction, literary fiction, and sci-fi fantasy. The sci-fi fantasy pile is the biggest because that's where my brain space has really been the past few months. Uh, totally escapist, but I still do like some literary fiction and wanted to sprinkle some of that in. Also Callie is truly the MVP of these videos and she is here. She's just slightly off camera, but maybe she'll move into focus. So I'll probably start with the smaller piles first, starting with literary fiction. A couple of these things were also sent to me by the publishers, so I'll mention that one that is relevant. The first being The Great Offshore Grounds by Vanessa Veselica. After it arrived, the news was announced that this was nominated for the National Book Awards. That's pretty exciting and definitely increased my interest in reading it. This book was offered to me by the publisher and I accepted without doing too much research into it. I figured, you know, why not? Uh, and it is a novel about a like great epic cross-country road trip in the United States with siblings that feel kind of estranged um, and have different goals and values and some for some reason they're all motivated to take a grand epic road trip together. I don't know many more of the details other than that it seems to focus on a sister relationship and there's a lot of tension in that relationship about um, choices that they made in leading up to their adult lives and both seeming relatively dissatisfied with the choices they made and simultaneously I think envious of the choices the other sister made. Um, so I think it just seems like a fun interesting family-based story with a road trip and I'm into those, as evidenced by the fact that I drove 4,000 miles over the course of about two weeks last month, so interested in this one. Probably should get to it sooner rather than later, given the fact that it was nominated for the National Book Award. It's one that I haven't seen talked about all about on booktube, so if you read this I'd be really curious to hear your thoughts. A book that I got from Women and Children First, a fantastic bookstore in Chicago if you ever happen to visit, is Braised Pork by On Yu, which is a novel that takes place in modern Beijing. A woman discovers her husband drowned in the bathtub rather unexpectedly, as one might think. And from what I've gathered from the jacket copy, I think she assumes it was murder, and then she goes on an adventure all throughout the city to try and, I think, figure out what happened and ends up uncovering a lot of past secrets. I think it... I've heard that it goes a lot much further beyond its premise into what, I'm not sure, but I haven't read that many novels that take place in modern China, and I think that that would be quite interesting. So, um... I liked the sound of this. And I also love the title and the cover, so. A couple of months ago I was talking on Twitter about how all I do these days is apply for jobs and watch Survivor, and that's basically still true. I mean I do end up reading quite a fair bit, but I don't feel like I should be buying a lot of books right now not having an income. And my sister took pity on me uh, very kindly and looked at my Amazon wishlist and sent me a few things to kind of cheer me up, one of which was Freshwater by Ikwiki Mezi. I know a lot of people are talking about The Death of Vivek Oji, which is their new novel that just came out last month, I think. Um, and I am interested in that, but I have wanted to read Freshwater since it came out and was so hyped up. I you know, over time I've kind of forgotten specifics about what it's about, but but I know for sure that the protagonist is a character who seems to have DID, um, dissociative identity disorder, but also I think it 
spans beyond uh, mental health and into a more fantastical thing. Um, not really sure how, but I heard so much praise for this and I'm really excited about it and want to get to it somewhat soon. And then these are two books that I bought in the discount section at the Unabridged Bookstore, which is also a fabulous bookstore in the Chicago area. And they have a really great discounted um, remaindered book section and so I picked up a couple things that I've heard a lot about over the years and I'm pretty confident I will like starting with The Girl in the Flammable Skirt by Amy Bender. I have read one of her collections The Color Master which I loved and I also really enjoyed The Particular Sadness of Lemon Cake which I read several years ago now really enjoyed and I've always meant to read more Amy Bender so I, when I saw this copy for $5.99 couldn't resist. If you aren't familiar Amy, Amy Bender is very similar to Karen Russell or Kelly Link in that she writes very interesting fabulous short stories. I love her writing style so excited for this one. And then I also got The Need by Helen Phillips. I wasn't exactly sure what section to put this in because in my head I thought this was more sci-fi but I'm really not sure. It's just labeled as general fiction on the back. Um, I haven't read any Helen Phillips but I know a lot of people really like The Beautiful Bureaucrat. This is a novel about a woman who I think she is alone in her house with her two children and then here's um, a disruption and I think there's a home invader in the house. Um, I don't know much more than that because I, I wanted to go into this book not knowing too much and um, I think that part of the fun of this book will be not knowing what's going on alongside the protagonist. The jacket copy made me think it was a little bit more on the horror side than sci-fi but I'm really not sure but Regardless, I probably want to read this sometime in spooky season. Okay, so on to nonfiction. I have a couple books that I bought that I wanted to read before the election. Is that going to happen? Probably not, because the, month, the election is now less than a month away, which is absolutely terrifying. But I still think that they're worth reading and I might, might try to squeeze in one in October. Fortunately, they will likely remain incredibly relevant and um, this knowledge I think will be still useful and important to have and if nothing else provide a lot of interesting and um, important context for how we got here. The first one I have is One Person No Vote by Carol Anderson who is the author of White Rage. I picked this one up because I wanted to read it in anticipation of the election to learn more about voter suppression. It's a thing that I know exists and you hear it talked a lot about but I wanted to be more informed on the specific issues in voter suppression, more of the um, historical context for how we got here and hopefully potentially things that I can be aware of that might, you know, help combat voter suppression. I was particularly interested in this because I think this is a thing that not a lot of white people are that aware of. And, you know, it's pretty atrocious in a country that considers itself to be such an inclusive democracy, which, you know, it's proven time and time again that it's really not and I just want to know more about it. And I know a lot of people really got a lot out of white rage and so I anticipate that I'll get a lot out of this as well because it's, it's extremely relevant in this election and I just you know, wanted to educate myself. In a similar vein I picked up The Color of Law by Richard Rothstein which is not about voter suppression but it is about gerrymandering and how the US government essentially racially segregated cities and communities and the subtitle is A Forgotten History of How Our Government Segregated America and I think that this is particularly important in a census year which it also is. This is also a thing that I want to know more about and I remember hearing of this book initially when Rinsey read it and I've wanted to read it ever since I just haven't so um, I picked it up and I, I do want to get to it soon. This one might be a better one to read in November and I might prioritize reading One Person No Vote in October just so I can get properly um, incensed I guess. You know I'm gonna vote and I can't really do anything about combating this now. I even applied to be an election judge but uh, that didn't pan out. They were so overwhelmed with applicants and so I'm like happy that that happened but I'm also a little sad that I won't be involved but at least I'll learn some stuff. So hopefully I'll be reading these too soon. Over the summer I bought the Stonewall Reader which was edited by the New York Public Library. I want to learn more about this particular period in history because it's one that isn't often talked about that much and I know about the riots themselves but this is a collection of I think um, you know primary source documents about uh, the period before, during, and after Stonewall and talks about a lot of the activists that were involved and first accounts, diaries, periodic literature, and articles from LGBTQ magazines and newspapers chronicling, chronicling the years leading up to and the years following the Stonewall uprising. And yeah, I think it's a good important thing to know more about. Also at Women and Children First I picked up Zadie Smith's Intimations which is a collection of a few essays that she wrote at the beginning of lockdown kind of reflecting on this moment and how do we reconcile with such you know 
stark change. I thought this would be the most impactful to read as soon to the events themselves as possible because I think um, you know there'll be a lot of people thinking about and writing about the pandemic for years to come and um, this is really trying to capture like the uncertain feeling as well we're still in the middle of it and uh, I think it's just a really unique piece of work in a time that we're still working through and um, so I think I'll get the most out of this by reading it soon. And I've never actually read a Zadie Smith before so hopefully this will be a good introduction to her writing because it is so slight. All of the royalties for this book went to charity so this particular edition benefits the Equal Justice Initiative and the COVID-19 Emergency Relief Fund for New York which is cool. Definitely interested in this and I've heard it's fantastic. And then I have another book that I was sent by the publisher. This publisher is Catapult and I requested White Tears, Brown Scars, How White Feminism Betrays Women of Color. And I originally thought this would be an interesting um, companion to Hood Feminism, addressing similar themes. I haven't read that book, but I really want to. And while this is addressing the issues of white feminism and how it isn't true feminism, um, and how it's actually quite damaging, it also incorporates a lot of cultural criticism. Um, for instance, it says that it examines subjects as varied as the Hunger Games, AOC, the 19th century lynchings and Mexicans in the American Southwest. So um, I think that that's an interesting element added to it, doing um, a dissection of toxic things in our culture. And I haven't heard anyone mention this before, so I thought I would showcase it here because I was sent it and I'm excited about it. And I think a lot of people would find this book interesting. Now we're on to the sci-fi fantasy pile. Another one of the books that my sister sent me was Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir, which is as everyone knows, it was described as lesbian necromancers in space, which was honestly enough for me. I've heard fantastic things about this. I've also heard a lot of people really did not like it. I'm planning on actually reading this along with my sister so we can see how we feel about it. And I would like to do that soon. But yeah, the sequel is now out and a lot of people were hyped for that as well. And I want to see what I feel about this. I just got this in the mail a couple days ago and it is A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik, which is lesson one of the Scholomance series. Although it has a very smudge prone texture to the jacket, it came like this unfortunately and I don't know how to clean it. Um, but this is a beautiful copy. I mean the spine is like shiny and gold and it and that carries over onto um, the jacket flaps, but also this is what the end papers look like. And it just, I mean, you won't be able to even see the detail from this angle, but it's absolutely stunning. And if you just pick this up in a bookstore and look at it, like it's wild that someone made this. I heard this was like a, a dark magic fantasy school type novel and for adults, and that's pretty much all I needed to know to sell me. I haven't actually ever read a Naomi Novik book before. I did start Spinning Silver, but wasn't in the mood and I don't even think I own it anymore. Um, but you know, I've heard such good things about Uprooted for so long and I do want to try and get to that book, but this sounds more up my alley. So I am really curious to get to this one and also will hopefully try to get to it soon. I have really big reading plans for October. They're not panning out so far. The final book in my sister's care package was The Raven Tower by Anne Leckie. They read and really loved it and I you know I didn't get along too much with Ancillary Justice and those books. I mean I only read the first one because I read it right when it came out or maybe right after it won the Hugo. Um, and, you know I was it was fine. It didn't blow me away and I haven't really wanted to return to it even though I did at one point buy the entire series at a library sale because each of the copies was a dollar. I ended up getting rid of that when we moved because I just had too many things and was in the mood to just like donate a bunch of stuff. So anyway, I did want to give Anne Leckie another chance because she's so highly regarded in the SFF universe and this is a fantasy novel rather than sci-fi. I seem to get on better with fantasy in general. I think I'm still like trying to figure out what exactly in sci-fi appeals to me and this really appeals to me because I know it is based on Hamlet. It's a Hamlet retelling or is Hamlet inspired in some way and I love Hamlet. It's a masterpiece so you know I, I would love to read more things that incorporate Shakespeare and I hope I like this. Also when in Chicago at the unabridged bookstore I picked up Master of Poisons by Andrea Hairston which had just come out that week I think and I don't know too much about this. I just know that Chris over at Chris's Bookish Cauldron was really excited about it and you know it's hard to not trust his taste in fantasy because he reads so much of it and he also hated Miss Warren so you know I couldn't even finish that book so I feel like I can trust his judgment 
From the jacket copy, it doesn't give too much away about the plot specifically, but it does sound like a fantasy universe that is highly inspired by, like, the climate crisis. The actual landscape being extremely toxic and damaging to people. And it's a beautiful bright yellow book. Um, the hardcover is also just like a really fun bright yellow, so I'm willing to just dive in and, and see how I think of it. One of my more impulsive purchases at the Unabridged Bookstore was this book, which I hadn't heard of before. I basically just loved the cover. It's called Fly Away by Kathleen Jennings. I mean, it just is a beautiful, beautiful book, beautifully designed. Hardback is also just stunning. It's like this foiled gold anatomical heart. The description of the plot on the jacket is quite sparse, but um, I was first intrigued because it's blurbed by Kelly Link, as well as Holly Black, who said half mystery, half fairy tale, all exquisitely rendered and full of teeth. And it also says that it is the beautiful darkness of Karen Russell. So uh, that was really intriguing to me. I don't normally gravitate toward like fairy tale things, but I was willing to give this a try because it's so beautiful. So yeah, we're gonna see how this goes. It's also tiny, so it won't take very long to read. The last of the books that I got on my Chicago shopping trip was from a bookshop called The Bookseller which I love. It's one of my favorite bookstores in Chicago. Unfortunately, we got there about 15 minutes before they closed, so there wasn't a lot of time to browse. So I kind of panic bought something because I wanted to buy something, um, but didn't have a lot of time to think about it. So I ended up getting The Best American Sci-Fi Fantasy of 2019 because, and only because, it was ed edited by Carmen Maria Machado. I tried reading the 2017 one, but I hated it. Most of the, I hated most of the stories that were in it. I was really unimpressed with the curation. Um, and I actually own the one from 2018, which was edited by N.K. Jemisin, but I don't have it with me here. It's in a box, you know, somewhere in New York State. I, I think that buying these based on the editor is a stronger choice to make because I'll probably get on better with the things that they choose to curate. And so I'm pretty confident that I like the N.K. Jemisin one. And I'm also pretty confident that I like the Carmen Maria Machado one. Her Body and Other Parties I thought was really interesting. I didn't care for every story in the collection, but I really enjoyed a couple of them and I think her just her brain is really interesting and I definitely want to read um, In the Dream House. I have that here. So I figured I'd give this a chance. I had a lot of um, unfamiliar names to me, which is quite exciting actually, because hopefully I'll discover some new authors I'm really into, or at least things to explore by reading this collection. That's always kind of what I want to get out of an anthology like this, so we'll see. A couple random things that I bought over the summer, one being Rosewater by Tade Thompson. I have always been really attracted to this cover. It's a series, um, it's a sci-fi novel based in Nigeria and um, like a mysterious biodome that has healing properties, a community that kind of grows around the dome because of the dome's presence. I don't know much more than that other than that something probably goes badly. It won the Arthur C. Clarke Award. I've heard great things about it. I thought it could be fun. And then I also got Dread Nation, which is by Justina Ireland, and this is a novel. I think it's the first beginning in a series. I don't typically read like YA fantasy, but oh well, I bought this, and it's a, it's a novel in which the zombie apocalypse starts during the U.S. Civil War, and enslaved people are trained to fight zombies. You know, I've heard it's good. That's pretty much why I bought it. It doesn't exactly sound like my kind of thing, but I thought it'd be, you know, a quick interesting, fun read, hopefully. And then lastly is another book that I was sent by the publisher. This is from Soft Skull Press, and it is Where the Wild Ladies Are by Aoko Matsuda, translated by Polly Barton, which is a collection of interconnected short stories that are all based in Japanese folklore. Specifically, I think a lot of Japanese ghost stories or other stories that focus on women being evil. Uh, you know, like the women that turn into foxes to trick men, and um, Japanese ghosts are often women that are trying to trick or hurt men. I think she puts a feminist twist to these stories, and I'm also intrigued by the fact that it's interconnected. And this is uh, also blurred by Kelly Link, so I'm very interested in this and um, definitely want to get to it soon, as I have said a thousand times in this video. Those are the books that I have purchased over the past six months or so. I'd love to hear your thoughts on any of them, hopefully positive, just because, you know, I'm excited about these books. In my next video I'm planning on making an October TBR. It's going to be overly ambitious because I've still not finished a book in October yet, but um, I'm really excited about a lot of things and really want to read a lot in October, so I'm going to share, uh, you know, a few things that I'm interested in reading soon. 
and uh, I also am going to do a September wrap-up. I haven't done wrap-ups for the past six months or so, um, but I have a lot of things to catch up on because of the many audiobooks I listened to in September, so that's coming soon as well. Unfortunately, Callie remained off screen for this video, but she's here. I'd love to hear your thoughts on these books, and I will see you next time. Thank you for watching.